Welcome to Zuntalis Battle Royale. A world of conflict and toil awaits you, but yet there is opportunity to gather vast riches, receive blessings and boons from your gods, and become a hero of Zuntalis. Play as different animal guilds, made up of a wizard, rogue, ranger and fighter. Furthermore, each guild has access to unique species and special abilities, allowing for varied gameplay styles each time. Use your magic, combat and guile to complete objectives that require a unique battle plan each time. Share your hobby with family and friends with this exhilarating quick to learn game. Indulge in beautifully crafted and fun to paint miniatures, light hearted but mysterious lore and moorish gameplay with hidden depth. It's time to unite your guild and go forth into battle. Everybody, welcome back. It's Band of Badgers. I'm Dave. We've got our co-host Ian down there somewhere below. Our Whoa. fan favorite. How you doing, Ian? I'm pretty good, thank you, Dave. How the devil are you? I uh, I am good. I am good. It is well, coming to the end of November. Coming into Christmas season. The Christmas decorations go up this weekend. Really? Um, but yeah, that's going to happen. It's going to be cheerful. Oh. It's going to be cheerful. We're going to have some like tinsel in the background here. I don't know what else we're going to do. Uh, but we're going to do something. I'm not sure. Um, so you're not going to toil a valley it and straight from the first of November be like, on the first day of Christmas. No. no. And considering he could, he filmed that in uh, August. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm definitely not going there. <laughs> anyway. Skid's reaction. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for joining us, whether you're watching us live or whether you're watching us on YouTube. Thank you very much for coming here. This, as you know, is our latest Q&A live session. And we are joined by Andy Pawley, all the way from Dice Heads, somewhere in the UK. How are you doing, Andy? I'm oh, great, thanks. And don't feel too bad about an early Christmas. My uh, youngest child found their advent calendar has eaten half of it already. So, um, <laughs> good child. See, that <laughs> is the way to do it. Now, you may, if you've been here for the, tra <laughs> crack on the head. if you've been here for the trailer, um, you'll know what we exactly what we're talking about. So if you have any questions, keep those questions coming. That's the most important thing I can Please say, do. is keep those questions coming. I yep. want cover the question and then your question, stick it into live chat, and we will pick them up and throw it up on the screen. Even if you just have a joke, even if you just think this stuff is amazing, I want to hear your comments, your thoughts, your, your outer being. Just shove it into text and shove it up, and we'll put it up on the screen. And the same goes yeah. for YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, like... Yeah. You know, two years down the line and the apocalypse <laughs> hasn't happened, put them in the comments below. Go over yeah. to Dragonborn Industries, click follow on that, click follow on Dice Heads if they've got a YouTube <laughs> channel. And it's you know, and then you know, we'll find Andy and we'll get him to answer any questions you have. Now let's Definitely. let's see if, if the audience can handle two people with high energy. <laughs> the Ian's the only person I've met who's the same level, it's like, yeah, let's do this. We're we're just gonna have some food, man. Yeah. Um, Has anybody so, ever said let's, undiagnosed let's ADHD? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> but anyway <laughs> Anyway, I have pen and paper ready for your questions. Keep those questions coming now. Over to Andy. Andy. This is the, the start of this. We'll be here for probably for the next hour, maybe four days. Who knows? Um, <laughs> let's start. What Bring is what is Dice Heads as, as your company and what is Zoom Tires? Here is the elevator pitch. Okay. The floor is yours. Okay. All right. So, well, Dice Heads is me. It's just me, really. A couple other guys that help out. Um, uh, I've been running Dice Heads for about uh, three or four years now. Um, big COVID-related sort of... Um, shake of the uh shake of yeah. the um of, 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 the, of the of the clouds and see what falls out uh and it's very exciting so I've, zuntalis battle royale is a family uh friendly player versus player animal skirmish miniatures game set in a rich world of adventure epic battles yes tales and glory and if you're looking for a colorful game really that's um full of personality for adults young people then this is the place for it really Fantastic. Now, Andy has been, uh, you would have seen the trailer, but Andy has been very kind to share some of the artwork. We've got, we're going to put it up on screen. We're going to talk about it later. We're going to go more in depth about the cards and minis, the stories and everything. Um, plus, I'm not going to say it. We're going to tease something right at the end. We're going to tease something. This is a oh. new product. Um, we're going we're gonna to announce it here. I don't know if it's been announced anywhere else, but I'm going to say it's the first time you're going to see it is here. I don't know if that's true. I think it's the first, first, first public, first public <laughs> outing. Definitely. 
There's been a few Fantastic. private tweet teases, but they're they're between me and the TZ. So I uh, the TZs, the teasers, the teasers, the teaser and the TZ. Well, I'm going to come straight in here, though, with some of the uh, one of the Twitch comments that's come straight up. And there's two comments from one person, Anonymous75, who said, "Uh, it's been ages since I've watched the stream. I backed one of the Kickstarters ages ago. The STLs are great. And then one of their next comments, they say, one day I'll get a printer to make them. Um, So obviously your STLs that you do for this game are printable by people like myself who have a printer and other people mm. like we have uh, a badger called Richard who does Warrior Prints 3D and I do yeah. a lot of as well. Um, but do you or, sell uh, copies and also do you sell STLs that people can have a merchant license for? Well, yeah, exactly. That's a um, the starting point, really. So to, to sort of uh, scroll back to the starting point of Dice Heads, I've always had uh, a side gig, a side hustle. I was an art teacher for 20 years here in Wimborne in Dorset um a job i've loved was very rewarding and really great and uh but i've always had little little things on the side i used to make comic books i've made card games and done all sorts of different things and then um in about the summer of 2019 i had this idea for making models of uh fantasy creatures with d20s for heads um yep. as you can see, <laughs> and i thought right well if i want to do that i need to learn um 3d modeling and i need a 3d printer to do that first of all so i ran a kickstarter i was used to doing kickstarters uh for comic books i'd made for some stickers oh, I've got some actually stuck on go my... get them we love stickers no. here we Brilliant. go on my sketchbook so um uh, here we oh, go nice those all right so yeah a dice nothing yeah fantastic dice nothing so classic uh some classic D and D characters with with I did about thirty different designs at that time, um, and that raised enough money for me to buy a three D printer, buy a license for ZBrush, and do an online course on how to actually use ZBrush, uh, and okay. started making these models and started selling three D prints of them, which was great, and I was doing quite mm-hmm. well with that, but it wasn't really cost effective as far as time and everything was concerned because i did have a sure. full-time job and two young children um yeah. so someone suggested well why don't you start selling the stl files uh, on patreon so okay great I'll, I'll do that and stuff and then um then the big covid happened you know so this yeah. is started knocking in. As it, i was a teacher as it, done, yeah. as it did i was an art teacher uh and that first lockdown where really, there wasn't a significant way of accessing online teaching for the children you know mm-hmm. we did a lot we did lots of project work here's some project as a secondary school teacher but you know beginning of the week would set some work if you want to do this have fun with this artwork but some of them only had virals and line paper and yeah so yeah. i had that time i thought all right this is it i can either sit in the paddling pool drinking pina coladas or i can uh, uh, which is okay you know <laughs> um yeah, it happens would you or have I can throw... well exactly so I threw all throw yourself into this, you know, really go for yeah. it. It's a passion. Yeah. Uh, and it really started taking off, you know, and the, so the Patreon picked up and then I started working with my mini factory on their tribes, doing Kickstarters of the STL files. All right, brilliant. Um, and I got well, the position ju- about a year ago. So I got- Just on that, we've got uh, yeah. Anonymous is asking, what is the Patreon? Where can people find you? Okay, so uh, patreon.com forward slash diceheads or my mini factory forward slash dice heads essentially yeah. uh i'll pop up some links in the chat as well I'll oh yeah I'll do that grab them now yeah, yeah. uh okay so i'm going to multitask watch, yeah you watch can do that tongue, That's fine. Watch, watch the tongue come out as i do this <laughs> well I, i'll head over to my mini factory because i should be able okay. to find the next i think i already follow you okay so that is the my mini factory tribes and then the patreon um yeah. Is there so whatever your poison? I've got more, more people who tend to join me on my mini factory, but that's yeah. for the digital digital work, and that's what we were. Oh, let's try that again. No, that's not copied properly. Uh, so that's for the so I'm doing two things, it's all going wrong. Hold on, that's all right. No, no, so it's all going stop right. and do it. And there, yes. there you go. Cool. Patreon, right. you there you go. So that's the, that's the digital outcomes. There, all right, you can get those um STLs on there monthly. So I was doing monthly subscriptions, monthly bundles, uh, and then started making these animal miniatures. So I still got a bit fed up with doing the, the D20 heads. There's only so many you could do, really, you know. Yeah. Um, 
and started thinking about, well, what's the narrative aspect of this? And of course, I'm in lockdown as well. I've got young children wanting to get them into the hobbies, get them off the screens. Yeah. They weren't really into that sort of dark, sort of edge lord sort, of, um, sort of games that I was playing, or even Blood Bowl, or or anything like that, because they're you know they're too difficult to paint. So started working on his game, Zuntalis, in this world, Zuntalis. Um, so what was the inspiration and... for the game then to get them involved in something that wasn't a screen that basically wasn't full edge lord rules for like D and D Pathfinder stuff like that, which yeah. you know Dave plays a lot of, I play a lot of, and yeah, I'm yeah. assuming you play a lot of because you're wearing a pumpkin D twenty top, yeah. which is you know, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and like I've got yeah, lots of these, though, yeah. Oh, I love that design so much. But um it's a good one. Because like with my kids, my kids are five and ten, and uh, my ten-year-old gets it a lot more now. But especially my five-year-old, we have to like sort of simplify. Like, just roll a d twenty. If it's past the ten, it's going to hit. Roll a five, roll a d six. Exactly. We'll do damage that way, and we simplify it a lot like that. But this, you are bringing this as a product to a table with them first. Mm -hmm. So where's the crossover, and how did it come about? Into let's make D and D into this Zoom Talis. Well, you've just purely summed it up. You know, I wanted. I love animals, you know, I love animal anthropomorphic things. Um, I play burrows and badgers, of course, or badgers and burrows. Yeah. Burrows and badgers. Uh, great, really fun. Uh, I love Wind in the Willows. I love all of that, uh, Red Wall, all those stuff. It's a massive part of my my sort of heritage, law heritage, mm. I suppose, like, you know. And, of course, d and I'm a, I'm a DM, normally on a Thursday night, so I've let my, my party off tonight if they're, if they're watching this. They, they should have great... tuned in. <laughs> they will be there. They'll be there, I'm sure. Until they're... the great fang will be waiting for them next week. Yeah. So, if, uh, if they're not yeah. watching, disadvantage for the entirety of the next session. Yeah. If they are watching, you get advantage. And I said that, so it's fine. Well, they're so you, you, okay. You go easy on him. I'll just go, you don't turn up. You, oh. You're just TPK'd. Uh, Can't uh, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, their characters are so op that um i nobble them with exhaustion and all sorts of curses as much as i can so anyway we talk about D D, and obviously you can yeah. hear the passion in in you there mm. for D D. and um you know we talk about okay yeah the characters are overpowered because that's how 5e is when you get to a certain level you are meta humans and going into that superhero yeah. realm so how do you take that and simplify it what's the rules difference between um 5e and then uh Zuntalis? Okay, so the, the, the massive rules difference is that you can uh, learn to play Zuntalis in about two rounds of the game. All right? That's the, the fundamental thing. Um, we took it to UK Games Expo this uh, summer, just gone, and yeah. we had a, demo, a couple of demo games, and people were picking it up and playing it within two or three rounds, and the people, and my, you know, my team, my friends, were just stepping back and just, just helping out. So all the data that you need to play is on the card. All right, so we've got the wow. cards here. So everything you need really is on there. And then you have a, a, a tracking sheet, which you can download off the Dice Heads website, of course. And it's also in the back of the rule book. So a very simple sort of tracking sheet. Now, yep. the idea is, is that you have four members of a guild. You have a, uh, a wizard, a fighter, a rogue, and a ranger. And they all have different um, melee range abilities uh defense pace uh magic and so on and so forth um and, and every character has a, a special ability and every species has a species ability so you have a, a variation in gameplay all right so nice. i'm just looking at the badges here so uh, uh as was the uh, ranger can make two longbow attacks on a hit so we, so you can make a second long sorry can make a second attack on a hit with longbow that's his special ability and his species ability, the, bur the badgers can burrow. So once uh, at the end of their turn, they can dig in and gain half cover. Right? So that would be the badgers' sort of special ability. Now, you can only use those special abilities or, or species abilities once per respawning. Because in Zuntalis, yeah. it's quite you have quite a low health. You have a health, average health is about four, four hearts. So they can go fairly rapidly. But... In Zutalis, you don't die, you respawn. So in each scenario, you have a um, a spirit ground, a sort of respawn zone. So when you um, run out of your hearts, you die, you, you respawn, and then you can reuse your abilities. Your opponent gets a, a victory point, uh, and you take a, a, a death point. And at the end of the game, you add up the victory points, which are based on the various scenario objectives. Plus, you add up how many times you've respawned and how many times you've taken out your opponents. 
essentially. That's very cool. So coming from, I'm going to jump in again, Dave, because we're going to go straight no. to war gaming here. Because uh, <laughs> you've taken the aspect of D&D, &D, which is combat, which a lot of people mm -hmm. play the game for, and a lot of people, yeah. uh, especially kids, like, oh, I want to throw out a bow, and they just want that action straight away. Exactly. Um, me having played games like Warhammer, like Blood Bowl, like Star Wars Legion, especially with, like, the uh, starting areas, for, especially for things like Legion, where you have this set area. And I know you don't respawn in those, but actually what you've done is create something that, like, when your players are taken out or your characters are taken out, your kids aren't just going, oh, well, I'm going to go watch TV oh, then. No. Yeah. yeah, it's far more family friendly. Yeah, but like. then you, yeah, and that's very cool. And I like the idea that um, you respawn because that's, you know, it keeps, especially younger kids who might be put out by the eldest one who can read the card properly and it's just like smash, 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 smash. <laughs> you know, once they find that attribute that works really well yeah. on, say, for example, a fighter and they're like, mm. well, I just have to get yeah. close. So I really mm -hmm. like that. And um, how much like R and D? How much play testing did that take? And I imagine that that involved your children. Quite a bit. Well, if you look on on the Dice Edge YouTube, there's a video of me and my daughter Tess playing it. Um, I'll see if I can find it and uh, and sling it up. Um, and it's got it's an early iteration of the of the game, basically. Um, mm -hmm. And it's actually a bit broken when you watch it. So there's, uh, here we go. So I'll, I'll, I'll put this on uh, share. Um, yeah, whacking into uh, into chat. No, that's, I'm not copying and pasting properly. <laughs> that's Copy. my Patreon again. Go support me on Patreon. There we go. <laughs> there you go. So that's a video directly to, to nice. that one. And then, um, you know, it's, it's she's very sweet in it, but she's played, there's um, a character called, uh, Liza, who's the rabbit, rabbit um, rogue, and she's got a dash action, so she can get double movement. That's her special ability. And if you watch that video, Tess just takes this rabbit and just <laughs> and captures the flag, and you know it's all done in twenty minutes. Uh, and so yeah. it's, it was after that particular particular sort of play test, really, essentially, that we thought, hold on a minute, right, one. Let's just nobble the dash a little bit. And two, uh, they can only use these special abilities once per respawning. Also, mm -hmm. the other thing that we took from that is um, that you tend to use the same character again and again. So when you have your four cards lined up, when you play, you can you play a character, you tap them out, and you can't play them until you've played the other three um, members of your guild. Good. You can, That's but there's, there's there's a fair, there's, yeah it's it, it's necessary really you know yeah. uh, there is a variant rule where you can replay a character but there the sort of nobbles their uh, nobbles their attacks if you choose yeah. to do that. Because that's the other thing that I really liked as well, is it wasn't just a war game, uh, essentially. You had objectives. And this is something we've seen with Marvel Crisis Protocol and Shatterpoint yes. from uh, mm -hmm. Atomic Mass Transmissions, as well as things like Star Wars Legion. And instead of it just being an all-out smash, 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 I've got the best defense, therefore I'm going to win, the objective then yeah. matters. So with yes. um, Dice Heads and with uh, Zoom Talus, do we find that it's a lot of, um, depending on the... Um, uh, the campaign setting or the objective marker. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the best way to describe it is with Legion, there's a lot of doing nothing. You're just preparing for like two, three rounds until the last round before like the final one. And then everybody runs in to try and get the objective marker. So is it very similar in Zoom Talis like that? Um, well, it depends on how strategic you are, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a couple of things is that um, it plays on a, on a relatively small space. We recommend like a 22-inch uh, game area. Okay, yeah. so it's quite... And a lot of the time we sort of bring things in. So if you've got a, a younger, a younger sort of audience player, you can bring everything in a little bit. Um, and it depends on the objective. So capture the flag is is actually can be quite interesting, or capture the aspect because you're actually capturing a, an aspect of the All Mother. And if you capture it, you can actually then get some blessings which can improve your game. Because it's a very simple rule set, but we've built in a, a lot of um, a lot of development a lot of ways to manipulate the game so uh, for example there are tokens where you can you can explore areas you have explore tokens and if you uh you 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 explore you pick up you roll your dice and you've got like um you might get um uh, an all mother's embrace which you return to your spirit grounds and refresh your special abilities restoring all missing hearts 
or you might get um, Dark One's Corruption, where you lose one pace and defense score until you respawn. You know, so you have those sort of extra elements. Uh, you can also we've also got um, uh, a points buy system as well. So if you wanted to build your own guild, we're going to be introducing some uh, legendary heroes uh, uh, soon. So you can sort of get some captains and some leaders, and you can say, right, yeah. well, actually, I want three wizards. Um, that's gonna. That's all I can have, or I can have you know two wizards and a captain, or I can have far, you know four rangers and and whatever you know whatever you want to do to 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 expand. So you have this very simple sort of core basic rule set, and then we have expanded rules as well, which you know goes into like the, the the magic element as well. So there's a certain magic element of magic. Um, the the wizards have four spellcraft points, so we call it you know rather than sort of spell slots. Uh, and we have a range of so you have the in the starter set you get the the rabbits and the foxes the rule books and their cards and you also get the spell cards which um, you have nice. shockwave which is a bit like a thunder blast yeah. ember strike which is a, a classic sort of fire fire spell you got a healing spell a quick step where you can sort of move people around um, entangle but then you have a, a few other more sort of darker spells that cost you. To cast so these are perhaps more interesting for more uh nuanced players or older players so one of my favorite ones is this one fell spear all right so my friend chris <laughs> who's also our mini painter came up with this one um so you siphon the life force of either yourself or an ally within four spaces and turn it into a spear of darkness that hurtles at an enemy yourself <laughs> or your ally lose what lose one heart all right but the spear deals two hearts damage, all right? Ignore half cover and so on and so forth. So you have that sort of corruptive sort of element uh, to it as well. Well, I uh, like that. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool. Another one, you have corrosive curse, which is similar. You know, it's sort of, it's a bit like a hex, I suppose, is a, is, it's a, you know, to put it in sort of 5e terms. And so you have that very simple core set. So I want to get the kids sat down and we're going to smash out um, something for, for you know, half an hour, 40 minutes, or we're going to develop something a little bit more, a bit more sophisticated. So in the rule book, we've got, uh, I think there's eight scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, two of them are, are sort of monster based, and we're going to be releasing sort of monster sets to go with that in the sort of the coming weeks. Uh, but the rest of them can be played with just like two guilds, essentially. So you can get on and get playing pretty quickly and pretty cheaply comparative to other games i suppose but let's watch let's pick up some uh, some of the artwork so again uh andy has shared some bits and pieces well while we're putting this up on the screen uh, again if you have any questions for andy uh or comments just you know if you like this stuff shout it out you've got to share it so we can put mm -hmm. it up on the screen and uh, just keep those questions coming now again you you mentioned you've done all the artwork for this yeah um, and this is this is the starter set. What we see here. Uh, well, that's that's so that's sort of the uh, what I've got up on screen here. That's sort of our sort of uh, splash splash graphic. But uh, so the starter set, I think, might be the next slide. Where yeah, yeah here. Yeah, so this is the sort of this is the uh, the sort of box art. Uh, what size of the minis is a question coming up there. Let me just grab one. And I'll show you. So Ooh. I've got the set of painted. Very good question. Here. Uh, yeah, it's important. They are slightly larger, all right, because they're, um, you know, they're sort of kid friendly. Let me grab a few different examples. Some are, depending on the species, will depend on on the size. So I'll just grab a couple. Um, here we go. So, well, I've got a few here. here. Go. So here we have, um, here, if we can see that, that's. Alfonso, he's the sort of the <laughs> rabbit wizard. That is. Right, if I hold him up against uh, that's this is just like a, a standard Hero Forge mini. So yeah, yeah. you know, he's, it's a thirty-two sort of mil. It's thirty mil. Uh, yeah, um, I think that's a twenty-five mil base. Um, Ooh, we well, got a question. So, uh, yeah. so uh, what's Mister, my favorite uh, guild? Yeah. Okay, well, it, I mean, I would it, I would sound like I was uh, um, sort of preaching to the crowd when I say badgers, but I think you can it, say badgers. That's, probably, that's perfectly fine. I think it probably uh, is. You know, I love badgers. 
Yeah, I mean, one, like, one, I like after you, after you. Go on. I, I like the cats as well. I've got the cat. The the the, the cats are pretty fun. They're uh, if I can get that's yeah, the cat on, wizard on, here. On. I've just, yeah. So the cats are pretty Ooh. fun as well. And I yeah, fucking love they, cats. They, yeah, <laughs> they, he's pretty. I mean, he is. He's pretty chill. Uh, the fighter. The fight. That's one of the beefier. The beefier <laughs> cats there. Let me get <laughs> Huh? So oh, we just really? look at that yeah, eye. Yeah, because these are painted by uh, my friend, colleague, uh, D and D uh, colleague, and all round top guy, a guy called Chris, who lives down the road from me, uh, who uh, goes by sort of the handle of um, Bashful Minis. I'll find his uh, his Bashful Instagram. Minis. He's a lovely, yeah. lovely guy. Uh, he's he's one of the nicest, loveliest guys I know, uh, and um, is a great, great mini painter. So I'm going to pop him in here as well. Um, so I, there we go. So that's 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 him there. I would say <sighs> favorite guild. So I'd say yeah, the um, the cats and rats are the best combination. I wrote uh, really? until, yes. if you're gonna if you're gonna humor me, if you that's okay, I'll, I'll read you the sort of uh each when you go on to the dice heads store and you look at the guilds, you get a little little backstory and sort of the crazy cats it says in the dark alleyways of New Snapperton, a peculiar guild known as the Crafty Cats prowl with a single minded obsession, hunting down the rat bags. These feline fanatics, armed with sharp claws and an uncanny knack for mischief, have made it their life's mission to outwit and manoeuvre their rodent rivals. Come nice. on. Nice. Yeah. That's pretty good. <laughs> and I do yeah. like cats. Uh, <laughs> cats so and rats. And we've just released those. Uh, well, I say we. It's, it's me. And Lord Farcroft there, he knows what rat bags means. He's in my, the my d, &D group. And there are... The rat bags are named after my current D and D group. In our oh, campaign. really? They are the they are the rat bags. You like they them are the rat much. bags? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Lord Farcroft is uh, also the Southwest's, if not the world's, authority on fighting fantasy fiction. So uh, there you are, Dave. So he knows I what know, he's talking I'm, about. I'm I'm a big fan of uh, fighting fantasy, Death Trap Dungeon, Warlock of Fire Top Man. You know, I don't know there's a king that you okay. the, the, the lot. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. One point to Saul, who is more knowledgeable on that, and that is with a fight. So yeah. fight, fight. <laughs> um, well, he's definitely. If, if you were to, I'm sure he would definitely. <laughs> we're going off off point here. That's my mate Jamie. He's an absolute legend. Uh, I'm sure he would uh, love to have a fire top mountain off with you if there was <laughs> such a thing. Uh, Jamie, have you got the the anniversary edition? Uh, so they they went back to fire top mountain. Uh, it's a it's a lovely story. It was the anniversary edition. I got it from Ian Livingstone at uh, Dragon Meet last year. Last year, uh, and he signed it for me. Um, so it was great. Absolutely, absolutely love fighting fantasy. Um, uh, so for the artwork again, my question was: yeah, uh, So you drew all these characters, you created this this, yeah. this world this game. Did you also uh, do the three D modeling, or did you have someone else yeah. do that? No, I do three D modeling. I'm uh, oh. a one man band, really. Apart from Chris, who um, um, who does the mini painting for me, um, there are some under guilds as well, which we'll come to for that question in a moment. But um, yeah, I do yeah, 3D we'll modeling. I do the packaging. Mm -hmm. I do the rule book layout. I do the social media. I do the uh, the admin. It sounds a lot like I me. Do, yeah, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, you know, coming back to what I was saying um, about my sort of video, a little story about how I, I came to this. You know, I loved my job as a teacher and I still, you know, look back on it fondly very very fondly indeed uh and it is incredibly rewarding working with young people and helping young people not just develop you know creative artistic skills but also develop an understanding and appreciation of the of the visual world they live in is you know a privilege and was 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 really great um there's a lot of things there are a lot of problems with teaching at the moment you know it, with a reflection with sort of state of all sorts of different uh public services but it was really really great but however so i dived into this during the lockdowns 
because I had the time. And then, you know, the school picked up again. And all of a sudden, I'm doing this all night, teaching all day. And, you know, it got to the point where I thought, well, I've got to make a choice. I've built this up. And so my good wife, who is, you know, definitely the most incredible person in the world, said, yeah, well, you know, you've got to go for it. And so, you know, Christmas, just after Christmas last mm -hmm. year, walked into the head teacher's office. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm resigning after 22 years at the same school. So, wow. uh, yeah, you know. Absolutely yeah. terrifying as well. But, it's a big step. Um, it's a big step, but <clears throat> fortunately, you know, there's all sorts of around, happening around those lockdowns and COVID, you know, and it affected people in, in the most incredibly difficult and traumatic ways, mm. not just with their physical health, but also with, you know, waves of existential terror, you know, oh. uh, and yeah. and huge and huge, huge impact on, on young people. Like, you know, yes, completely. But for me, it was it was it was a transformative moment in my life. You know, I can't deny that. You know, so now coming back to your original point, Dave. Sorry, I do I did tell you I like to talk. No, going back to your we're original we're point. To chat. Yeah, going back to your original point. Um, yeah, I do it all basically. You know, um, yeah. There's, there's and more it, you know. as well. We've got um, uh, there's a couple of. The badges, bodacious badges. Um, and you yeah. can see a close-up with some of the details on the card there as well. What, what have you taken for inspiration for the cards? Are you, are you looking okay, at so well, the like cards Pokemon are very interesting, this? interesting, interesting point, really, because um, the old cards, when I was sort of churning, you know, still struggling with time, didn't look as good. I've got a set of them somewhere. I'll put a set aside to show you. So... Uh, what I was doing is my 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 son was colouring in renders. I can't. Oh, here they are. And so I don't know. Here are here are the rabbits. Okay, so if you put yeah. So we got the. So that's what the cards were like. Okay. Okay. Pretty yeah. Neat. They're okay. Yeah, they're good enough. Uh, but that was just like the render from the three D model. Uh, okay, yeah. That yeah. Was just included in, in Photoshop, and then here is. Um, Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so, so much better. Nice. And it was a it was you know it's a transformative thing. So all right, what am I drawing from from inspiration? Well, part of the development of this is that I say I'm a one band man, one man band, but not not completely. Um I work with Parable Games who make an RPG called Shiver. A right, really okay, great yeah. horror RPG. Um they I work with them and they wrote a lot of lore and content for me or in collaboration for me. And a lot of that is about the different biomes and domains of where the different animals come mm -hmm. from. These so guys were at Dragon Meat last year, weren't they? I think they were. I met them at Beachhead, the, the con we were talking about. Um, yeah. You know, and they, so they've written a lot about the, the, the world. So the sort of the badges, let me see if I can find it. So the badges domain, I know we've got a couple of questions here. I'll, we I'll do. jump into those in a moment. All I'll right. just read this about the Badger's Domain, and then um, we will uh, – here we go. So this is um, – they they live – so they live in the Black Heart Forest, which is next to the Dark Kingdom. There's a dense woodland on the border of the Badlands. Life is abundant here, and deep within the forest, the sunlight is blotted out by the trees, and digging under the ground are the badgers, mining for resources – and holding the line against the encroaching darkness, trying to keep the forest safe. Uh, and then it, it goes on. The, so the name of this part of the Blackheart Forest is Darkfall. Uh, it, it's a place where the corruption of the Dark One has bled into the natural world, and only the bravest of animals make their home there, or the most foolhardy. Uh, in the dark, you can hear the ravens calling out, but by that point, it's already too late, and their wings will soon be upon you. Ah, all right so uh it's fantastic isn't it Love so it. you know they've written a lot of that the the the, the, the crazy cats ones i saw I, I wrote there as well and so you know I, I was getting this content through and we're working and jamming on all this stuff and i think wow this looks and feels so exciting you know and of course actually and this is sort of coming towards perhaps what we'll cover at the end of the stream um ties into can i get all this content really contextually into this skirmish game yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Because it is probably the tease at the end. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I do think. Um, we look yeah. at. 
Yeah, so I was say the question is, uh, what's the roadmap for future? Uh, what's the roadmap or future for upcoming releases? I guess is it literally oh, where yeah, that leads yeah. into with just uh, the It does, but um, so that ties back into Mister Mister Drowl's previous question. Uh, some undead guilds. Well, we do have undead undead guilds. There's a a group called Tuskers. All right, which are little uh, again. I'll find these. These are corrupted undead pigs. All right. So, uh, <laughs> oh yeah. When we talk about zombie pigs, zo- we are talking about zombie pigs. Uh, that's, that's, and they are, put you off bacon. You know, you wouldn't eat. You wouldn't eat these. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can. So, I've got to start with this one because he's he's definitely my favorite. He's like a little sapper there. Oh wow! That's, yeah. So and again, this is painted. Good. This is painted by by Bashful Minis. Um, <laughs> there's a, a a wizard or sort of you know, mage of some description there. He's very good with his OSL, especially eyes. with the glowing eyes. Is so oh, amazing. he definitely is. He's great, Chris. He's, he's so amazing. Um, there's a pugilist one there. He's got sort of That's iron nice. gloves. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, and there's also there. I can only describe as their mum, really, I suppose. But I, uh, you know those mum jokes, but uh, here we go. <laughs> it's really good. Wow. Very, very cool. It's a smashing job. So, essentially, at the moment, so the roadmap is this. So, it's, 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 it, in the short term, I'm um, releasing new guilds on the physical platform uh, every month. So you can now buy the physical midi minis on our only game store, they, which come with the four. So when you buy a guild, you buy the four models, which come with bases and the four cards. I'm releasing two new ones a month at the moment. So we've just released the um, the cats and the rats, but we've also got the axolotls, the, the badgers and uh, ravens, turtles, squirrels, and... Um, Foxes and, and rabbits, which is the, the starter set. So I'll be releasing two new mini, two new sets every month, introducing wow. monsters because there are monster variants um, in the uh, monster variants in in uh, in the rulebook. Um, so that's sort of the short term plan. The other plan really is that you know, is to expand the world of Zuntalis really, and sort of you know, look at other ways of um, integrating all this law into making it as accessible and as fun for as many different types of people as possible. Because when we were at UK Games Expo, and again, this is the team I had was my, my D&D crew. Aren't they lovely? They came up with me. We hired a van, drove up to Birmingham, uh, stayed in Airbnb, and uh, they were absolutely awesome. You know, so we had a really great stall at uh, Expo. But what struck me was the people that were interested in were enthusiastic about the game. It was a very busy weekend for us, which was fantastic, but it went beyond the average sort of gamer, I suppose. Yeah. You know, and that yes. which is exactly what I want to to uh to sort of promote really is that there were obviously families and young people were very enthusiastic about it. I was really happy to see Lots of female, lots of women really getting into it. Lots of couples were really, oh, let's buy this. Lots of, because a lot of the time, you know, where I've been to, you know, the sort of, oh, I don't want to, you know, be generalization, but wives and girlfriends sort of stand back, oh, you're not spending your money on that. And, you know, it's, but it, it just seemed to be this much more inclusive, fun, uh, you know, sort of catchment, really, I suppose. And so that's you know what I really love, and I think there's there's a market for it, but there's also mm. a, I think there's you know a good reason for doing it as well, for sharing a hobby, for removing gatekeeping. That's where part of the reason I've been so successful is because of crowdfunding and being yeah. able to communicate with people directly. You know, yeah. twenty years ago, there's no even ten years ago, there's no way that I could have done this if I couldn't communicate directly with people online. And remove yeah. uh, middleman. Uh, remove remove the middleman. Remove the gatekeeper. You know. Yeah, yeah. Remove. You know. And so you know that's why that's why I did it. Because also you know we run a Discord. I run a Discord, um, which is really 
fun and uh, laid back and, um, you know, it's, you know, I'm on my own all day making fun things, chatting with nice people online. I can't, I can't wish for more, really, can I? Really? Yeah, exactly that. And I, I mm. actually like what you said about uh, inclusivity and about um, a, a new crowd to um, uh, the game and to that, because actually um, when I've seen a lot of TTRPG things, it has been very male dominated. And what I'm loving seeing in uh, recent years is that we are getting a, a bit more inclusive, especially across like Definitely. not just the gender gap, but across so many other things. But what I really, really like that you've done here is you've created this such a colorful and bright mm -hmm. Uh, a product that not only does it appeal with the um, and you know I hope this isn't an insult but there is a childlike uh, aesthetic to the minis oh, definitely. that yeah. appeals like to that chibiness that you get with mm. uh, a lot of kids illustrations a lot of friends mm. of mine who are adults uh, full grown 30 year olds who are like oh it's so cute it's adorable and um, one of those is actually a, a player at my table she's a 3D artist for VR mm. and um, I showed her the axolotls because they were the ones I was showing off around the house like mm. check these out because we're big on axolotls here and she was just like oh my god i need to go check this uh artist out and stuff and yeah i thought it was just incredible that um you've crossed so many boundaries and borders with this alone that it's incredible um but i'm gonna stop talking and move across to some of the questions because dragon school has said uh right. how how long after the physical release will the STL files be available? Um, well, we are moving to the point, hopefully, within the next month or so, that obviously I do a guild every month. I'm going to uh, be able to cross cross that pretty much instantly, if not the month after. Okay, so um, I'm, I used to do two guilds a month. Now I'm doing one and something else as well, some additional uh, RPG content, which you know, we'll talk about when we sort of wrap up. Uh, so there'll be one new guild every month created for STLs. I don't see why that can't um, you know, transfer across on the physical platform. But of course, also I've got to be very careful that you know, from a you know, putting my business hat on, that I don't just keep chucking everything out all the time because yeah. I want people to get the models, to paint them, enjoy them, play with them, get the most out of them, and then think, right, well, what am I going to get next? Because something I've also found on the the digital platform. So we've all got a pile of shame of minis we haven't painted. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, but there's a whole other strata of pile of shame where people haven't even printed the minis. Right. And so you have oh, these monthly, subs you know, you have these monthly is it, is this subscriptions. New, is this a new thing for 3D printing people? They, yeah. You buy the STRs it, and you it, just hang around and print it. Because it, it's such a new thing, all right, and people... You know, there's a lot of new creators, there's some amazing content out there. Yeah, but some, really of these people, some of these people offer enormous amounts of models each month. Yeah, <laughs> enormous amounts like whole armies, whole sort of Warhammer yep. armies. Yep, I, I've never paid a Warhammer army in my life, like you know, and I know I never will, but you know, let's face it. Um, <laughs> so what I'm very much interested in is about offering an experience, all right, and offering a world. And offering something fun that you are manageable. Yeah. So each month I do one guild, some RPG characters, perhaps some scatter terrain, perhaps like a, yes. a yeah. like a, you know, some monsters and bosses. Something that you can print off and you know, slap chop fairly easily and get onto your gaming table. And you know, you've got the content and the background and the law behind it. So what's happening is that. You're not just buying some really cool sort of Space Marine knockoffs. You're actually getting something that is a whole experience, a whole gaming experience. Yeah. Hopefully. And I think Mr. Drawl has come in with another question that I think is very relevant here because they've said yeah. uh, a little while ago, uh, everyone has a favorite animal, really. So everyone is going to mm -hmm. see that species guild and be interested, which I think you're completely right. Every month, if you've got something yeah. new, it's going to be somebody's favorite. And they were saying they mm -hmm. need a golden retriever guild. And um, well, yeah, I don't, cool. I don't I haven't done dogs. Cool. <laughs> I, I could just I imagine that them. one as well. I mean, that could be yeah, so. I've... I mean, again, the, the different breeds, iconic breeds of dogs, is just a whole mm. other piece of land yeah. somewhere. Oh, completely, yeah. Chihuahuas would be good, wouldn't they? I think chihuahuas <laughs> or all of them are fighters. Or Dachshunds. <laughs> all of them are barbarian <laughs> chihuahuas. Yeah. Like, ah! Chihuahuas and Dachshunds or something. I have the wolves. 
but they're not they're not on the physical plan. they might come out next month for wolves nice yeah very cool um so yeah there we are cool. yeah i just think more, it's um, incredible you got some more bits and pieces on on your cards we still got uh some artwork to these are the spell cards aren't they yeah so they're the four sort of basic spells uh where you have um yeah you got a heal you got an entangle which is you know you sort of slow down the progress ember strike we needed uh oh, sorry mr drow's come up peace yeah. behind the bulldogs right all with flat caps on <laughs> definitely um ember strike you know when i first started doing doing zootalis we didn't have uh, a fire spell i couldn't you know my mate chris again bash from minis point out well there's no fire spell here what on earth are you doing like, you know so we had ember strike uh quick step it, it's a sort of a, a misty step thing but um you know you can do it against your opponent if there's a, a, a save um you know um yeah we really so so go on. Oh, sorry, I was going to jump in. So obviously, with these, we've got uh, we've got the heal, we've got the debuff, we've got the yeah. attack, and we've got the buff. Yeah. Are these yeah. uh, constant across all of the guilds, or do all of the guilds have different magical um, abilities, or is this like your set magics? Okay, so we've got so that we've got those four spells. There are uh, um, ten spells, I think, in total. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, so they are the sort of the core. So we talked earlier about there being sort of basic and sort of advanced rules. Okay, so the basic spells. If I if you could if I show you in the rule little book. So yeah, they're they're your four sort of basic spells. All right, I've yeah. just seen there. Yeah. Uh, and then you turn to the page where you have page twenty one. You have advanced magic. Oh. There is that. Uh, that's that. Zuma, oh, R, R. and then you have another six. Okay, so you have um, Shockwave, Quicksand, Crystal Skin, Distract, Fell Spear, and Corrosive Curse. Okay, nice. so they are they are now there is in the law that we're developing. We talk about four spheres of magic. So you have like um, destructive. Um, Hold on, I've got them all on here. Construct. Right in front. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we feel types of magic. Here we go. You've got the life, life sphere, so it's healing and so on and so forth, and uh, sort of plants or druidic sort of stuff. Destruction sphere, transmutational sphere, and manipulation sphere. Okay, so they're the four nice. spheres of magic. And then there's sort of necrotic magic, because sort of the, the backstory to Zuntalis is that uh, the world... Was this beautiful, peaceful uh, uh, sort of paradise for lovely sort of your fluffy bunnies leaping about, and then with the All Mother Malfauna, the All Mother was sort of the sort of the, the the overarching goddess of this of this sort of Gaia Gaia sort of figure, um, and then the Dark One comes and sort of you know the 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 All Mother has to uh, fracture herself into different aspects, which and awakens the animals. Uh, and so they, you you then have these sort of uh, awakened. They're called the, all the the guilds are called awakened. So they're sort of anthropomorphic animals. And then you have the respective gods. So in answer to that question, are they unique to each guild? Well, there are different variants rules. So the way that we play, you can play it with the simple spells first of all, as introductions or with younger audiences. Then you can uh, have the rule where you can choose to divvy up who's got the spells between the yeah. two guilds. Uh, and we are working, so this is Chris, when I say we, you know, and a few other people are thinking about developing, yeah, sort of species specific spells. And that sort of ties into uh, sort of the RPG sort of thing I've alluded to as well. So oh, at the moment, we've built this sort of core, core magic, and then we're going to expand the spells. Um, depending on the sphere. So it might be that you decide your, as we expand that spell, perhaps in a sort of, you know, uh, a second wave of, of magic, as it were, you, you might decide that your wizard is uh, a proponent of the uh, transmutational sphere of magic, and that will be there. They'll have the core four and then some transmutational spells. Nice. You I'm mentioned gonna, the... Uh, oh, after you, Dave. I'm just going to shout out. We are down to the last 10 minutes, folks. Oh. So we're going to spend the next five minutes talking about some more bits and pieces we've got. The last five minutes, we're going to show you some teasers. Um, yeah. So do get your questions in now. Um, now so, I, I, 
Go, I've got a jump pad. <laughs> I've got a jump pad. I've got a jump pad. I've got so much to ask. You go first. Right. So we mentioned we saw on the cards, and this is a miniature skirmish game. Um, but one of the things you've also done as as part of this, you've also got the mats to go with it as well. Are these? Mm, yeah, the, that's right. I mean, on the, I'm going to shove up an image up on the, the yeah. screen. Um, what what are, what have we got here? Is, is it different different maps for different? This points? is a neoprene. Map. This is a. I should have grabbed it. It's a neoprene oh. mat. Can you give me just? Well, they we're very short for time, aren't we? Uh, they're a neoprene mat. If you look at the the photographs on on, on Facebook, on an Instagram, and so on and so yeah. forth, you can see them in action. They're a beautiful, high quality. Now they're from a company called Deep Cut Studios. Uh, mm. I know Deep Cut. Yeah. yeah, we know them. There you go. So, <laughs> yeah, so they you know the quality. Though. It's top quality yes. uh, to mats. They're twenty two inch square. They've got like a non slip bottom, uh, and that's the, the we've got a dungeon and we've got a a, a wilderness. Um, they they're great you know they roll up really well they're very smooth um and they're for sale right now but i uh you know they they look great i mean you don't have to play on that you can play on you don't have to measure either you know or you don't have to have a grid either you can measure if you want to do or eyeball it if you wanted to as well if you've got some fun terrain you wanted to use i've got a friend who's bang into Mordenheim and he's got some Ooh. crazy Mordenheim, Mordenheim terrain that we've used before, you know, so, nice. but they look great. Uh, and you know, they're, 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 they're available now. And so, you've also got, um, the, the sets come in their own boxes as well. So you've got the starter set. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So we've got the starter set. We've got the starter set, which is the, the foxes and the rabbits. And then you have the different, uh, animal guilds that we've, we've talked about on the, on the shop now at the moment they come in clear package in clear packaging we're still working out how to get the boxes printed and manufactured so once we manage to get this into shops uh they'll yeah. the boxes will look like that but at the moment i have to say hand and heart if you order online right now uh they'll come in a clear box right now in a in a in a, in a, in a non non-graphic box yeah, you mentioned earlier about the RP aspect of things, and there's two yeah. questions that I'm gonna that kind of lead me towards that. The first one being uh, the amount of players for the game. Uh, is this a two player role or is there like a solo player mode, or is it for four players? You know, what's the sort of like okay. numbers there? So okay, so we talked earlier about play testing, and you know, earlier iterations of the rules we put in sort of variant variant options for putting sort of three or four players in, but it gets pretty messy, I have to say. Um, it becomes just a meat fest in the middle of the of the terrain. Yeah. So we say that this is it's a PvP uh, uh, it's a PvP game at the moment. All right. Cool. Uh, this battle royale, which is why we're developing other other things. Which brings me on to the next point. You said about the RP element of things and about RPG. Yeah. Obviously, we're looking at uh, a cross between uh, D&D combat, Pathfinder combat, and a war game. Uh, is there an mm -hmm. RP element to it at the moment? And if not, is there anything coming up that would be an RP element for this game? Definitely. You know, I mean, there is an RP element to it because we try to make the scenarios as sort of contextual as possible. You know, we don't want, and we encourage people to read the law and make up their own scenarios. So mm. as you said, it's not just like last man standing. So you can set it in a certain, I don't know, the axolotl goddess's temple. You could, uh, you know, someone from the dark world, is, from the dark kingdom has come and kidnapped your wizard and you've got to go and rescue them. So there is the RP element to it. However, it doesn't give you that opportunity to really explore the characters, to develop your own characters, and explore perhaps and travel around the world of Zuntalis. And that's why uh, I've been working flat out on the next phase of Zuntalis, which is Heroes of Zuntalis, um, which is going to be uh, an RPG adventure. So uh, yeah. that's going to be using the Powered by the Apocalypse uh, sort of system, so 2D6, uh, tiered levels of success. We've got the 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 the, the cover art here um, for for the rule book. This is coming out to my digital subscribers hopefully next month. So that will become available to people that don't want a 3D print. So there'll be a tier where you can just download the rule book, the character mm -hmm. playbooks, and the scenario each month. So the the first scenario coming out next month is going to be a uh, curse of the venom queen which mm. is you can imagine is yeah. going to be a nice sort of spider related <laughs> one here uh, and as i was showing you guys earlier um uh, we've got i've printed off here she is oh, uh, good. the venom uh, queen all right ready to print off. 
Uh, <laughs> so she's good. Got, she's quite cute. She's really sweet. But she's also got some Venom Warriors, which are sort of medium-sized ones. And then there's some very cute Spiderlings, which are uh, very cute indeed. So they are also how many pages are we looking at for each book? Okay, so the rule book then that I'm working on right now is 56 pages, uh, yeah. which will have the rules for the game uh, and all that Zuntalis law that we've talked about. So yeah. a lot of the context. Uh, a playbook, so the character sheet for uh, the 12, there's going to be 12 different archetypes or classes. Uh, the playbook will be sort of two core sheets and there'll be like additional sort of role play prompts because we want young people to role play. So the 2D, 2D6 system is really easy and really quick to pick up. Uh, and there's sort of, you know, tips about how to role play like uh, a, um, a ranger or how to role play like a tinkerer like, or artificer or something like that. So there are, you know, again, this idea of being accessible uh, and inclusive. That's pretty, really cool. Very, very and cool. When, when do we think that's when is that out? If you yeah, got a okay. date in mind? that's going to be released. It's going to be released on Patreon and My Mini Factory next week, actually, the week after Whoa. in December. The first, the, the first iteration of the rule book, which probably won't have a lot of illustrations in, but we'll have some illustrations in six playbooks, character sheets, and the first scenario with the monster statistics will be available in December. Wow. You can get that as just the digital, just the digital sort of PDFs of, of, of the game, or you can get it with the, the models to 3D print. And then once that sort of beds down for a month or two, I'll then make that a physical release each month on only games. Go on, Dave. Go on. So I put my hand up, you see, because he's a, he's a see. He used to be a teacher. He's so a teacher. <laughs> So, uh, sir, what, I've got a question, sir. Please. please. Um, uh, also, no. so if that if that goes on now, um, we're talking about right now. We are in Black Friday week uh, because in mm. November. Um, yeah. You also have a sale going on. There it is. It's twenty five percent off oh, right oh. now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that modern technology at its best. Uh, so Amazing. go and Good check that speed. out. Yeah. yeah. The other thing, and I don't want to be, be you know, I'm not interested in hard sales. I never have been. But I do want to just say a couple couple of things that are a bit hard sell. It's 25% off, which is really fantastic. But also, only games who I work with to, to manufacture these minis, they will do free international shipping on orders yeah. over 60 Ooh. quid. So if wow. you buy a star, basically if you buy a starter kit, starter set and one of the game mats, I think that should probably push you over uh the sort of the free shipping limit as well and the last one and again i don't want to to play on people's fomo but i do know that there's only about six of the wilderness mats left so that's true i'm Ooh. not you know i'm not yeah you, you heard know, it here, you might want to you might want to jump on those if you like but just you know, bring us on to one of the two questions that are in chat so uh the first one is uh, from Anonymous75, who says, do you sell uh, to, uh, for any local game stores? It would be great to see them in Australian stores. So I'll we'll start with that. Okay. Yes, not yet. I, I alluded to earlier that the um, the packaging is still in development. Once that's done in the next, again, that's one of my targets for December. I'll then be reaching out to um, to friendly local game stores who hopefully will you know pick it up from there, which will be, be fantastic of course yeah uh, and the next one is from dragon school who says uh, if you buy digital files to print your own for people like us who yeah. 3d print uh can you buy the cards separately to go with the guild which i think is a great question great very good yeah. question yes we have uh so it takes me a long time to make these cards so i showed you the original version i showed you the new version so i'm wor retrospectively working back on uh those cards but if you go on to the dice heads website there is a cards bundle so you can buy the rule book and spell cards on their own. If you don't want the rabbits and foxes, uh, you can also buy the the a character card bundle. So the first six, I think it is, uh, guilds that we have on the web store, you can buy as a bundle together as well. So you can pick those up. When you buy the digital model, you can also get access to the PDF of the cards to print off for yourself as well. But you know they don't look quite as nice on your on your home printer. Indeed, indeed. Right, we are going to have to wrap it up there, folks. Yeah. That's oh, no. the top of the hour. 
Um, wow. But what we'll do, we are going to leave you uh, with the trailer before we go once again. Uh, Andy, thank you so much for joining us. It's been oh, a pleasure. Guy, thank um, you so much. I, it's been great. Abs absolutely falling in love with Zitalis. Um, I think yeah. it's great. Looks great. Family games. Um, I know my boy's interested, but yep. he's going to have to wait. He's going he's, he's in a queue. <laughs> um, I'm gonna, bodacious badgers is is what we're gonna do and platypus uh, that's well, what's platypus doing. platypus oh what's that in my hand <laughs> it's a platypus Absolutely fighter fantastic fuck yeah well there is a ranger as well up there now also uh, uh, i don't know if we said it when we was on air but off air we've also managed to get andy in for next year andy will be back in the new year as we're going to paint yeah. up some of these menus as well up on the, uh, one of our other shows the great british brush off so Amazing. if you like what you do what we see here if you're watching this on youtube remember click like and subscribe if you're watching this on twitch live thank you for all your questions thank you for joining in uh, remember go to youtube.com slash band of badgers uh, and please do like and subscribe there. Um, any last questions coming in? Uh, then we've got Platypus Ranger for the win. Anonymous is saying, I'm looking forward to it. Fan oh, absolutely cool. fantastic. Again, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you, Ian, for joining hey! us as well. Uh, for stepping Quite in when you. Steve was not around. Um, it's, it, it's always fun to have uh, Ian on. Again, fan favourite. We love Ian. Oh, uh, thank you. Nom nom oh. nom 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 nom. Feed me yeah. more confidence. No, my, well, I need you. Nom, nom, nom. You'll be back tomorrow. We've got dragon lance. <laughs> oh no, no, it's fine. I'll be <laughs> feed them who? Well, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna leave uh, we're gonna leave you with the trailer, and then we'll say goodbye now. Um, see you later. Bye. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Thank guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to Zuntalis Battle Royale. A world of conflict and toil awaits you. But yet there is opportunity to gather vast riches, receive blessings and boons from your gods, and become a hero of Zuntali. Play as different animal guilds, made up of a wizard, rogue, ranger and fighter. Furthermore, each guild has access to unique species and special abilities, allowing for varied gameplay styles each time. Use your magic, combat and guile to complete objectives that require a unique battle plan each time. Share your hobby with family and friends with this exhilarating quick to learn game. Indulge in beautifully crafted and fun to paint miniatures, light hearted but mysterious lore and moorish gameplay with hidden depth. It's time to unite your guild and go forth into battle.